with us. She's awesome. She can step out of here. Well, I appreciate those kind words, and uh, I really am honored to be here today. I'm so thankful that we got a chance. I almost feel like I should just chat with you like this, but I want you to all hear me. So. <laughs> But it's such a nice group here today, and I do feel like we're family. And uh, I do just feel um, a warmth here in this place, and I'm so thankful that um, God is birthing new things. And I do believe, my husband gave me a little cue over there, but I do believe that the birth of this baby that was up there is a significance, um, not only to Ben, your family, but also to this church. And I just received that into my life as well, that that's... I'm right here in the middle of all of this, and so I just received that new birth in me as well, that God is doing something new in our lives. We're getting ready to, for spring to come, and so the spring season is on us, and we're just going to receive that new birth, that new life into ourselves personally. So how many of you want to step in on that blessing, right? So God, we just right now, we just receive from you, we receive the new birth, we receive the new life, God. We receive that Zoe life. We've got the Zoe and his family too. And God, we just thank you that we receive, God, from your hand, the goodness, the kindness, the mercy, the grace that you have for us in this season. And God, I thank you that we have everything that we need, as you reminded me this morning, for life and for godliness. And God, we have that in this moment, but we also have that in the moments to come. God, and so we thank you for that in advance, that this season is going to be a season of life springing up inside each one of us, and we just call that hope into being. And Lord, we thank you that you are the greatest encourager of all. So I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would come and just sweep over this place, and that you would encourage through my lips, through the words that you give me today. God, I thank you that you are here in this room. I thank you that you're birthing new things today. God, I thank you that you are springing, your life is springing up inside of every one of us. God, thank you that we have you on the inside, you on the outside, you are above, you are beneath, you've laid your hand on us, God. We are so covered today, and I ask that you would circle this room with your presence, that your angelic hosts would be all over this room to bring comfort and life and encouragement in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm really super glad again to be with you guys, and I um, I do have a few things just to mention briefly. Um, this is I loved how I, I've seen artists in front, but I loved how Mary came up and spoke about her picture because sometimes you'll see it, but you don't really know what was going on with the artist. So I love that, and I love that it's a gift, and I believe that. All of you have something that God's given you that is a gift for other people. And some of you may know what that is today, but some of you may still be searching. But if you're searching to find out what that gift is you can give away, God is so willing to tell you. So just ask him, God, what do, what do I have in me that you want to give away? Because every one of us has something. And one of the things God's given me is the gift of music. And I, I love music. I've loved music since I, I can remember. And... Um, and one of the things that I, I uh, like to do with that music is to make it accessible to other people and to bring out from that gift God's given me and to give that away as, as gifts to others. And so um, this you know, helps support our habit of loving people, ministering to people, and it also gives something that is like the gift that keeps giving. This particular um, project we did was my husband and I, and um, we came together we went into the studio and we put together healing scriptures and healing prayers and songs um, for people to, to basically play in their home, in their car, wherever. But it gives you an opportunity just to let those life words pour over you. So, you know, you can find um, this, is a, this is really better than Benadryl. It's better than Advil, better than, you know, Tylenol. If in your home you have a sick child, you just play the CD as they're sleeping, and it's amazing. We have had incredible reports about this CD. This is a project that we put together, and it just keeps it, it just it just keeps going on and on. And I think because it's unique, 
and that all of us find ourselves um, a time here or there where we need healing in our lives, right? And so it's something that meets a need, a felt need. Um, it's also great if you just need to sleep well, like the second part of this here, instrumental music. And so if you have any trouble sleeping, throw this on at night and get some great rest. Speaking of rest, this is um, a CD project that I did for babies, uh, for children and their parents. And I say and their parents because um, moms and dads need sleep too. <laughs> and often when you have a baby, you get little of it. And so this is for moms and dads and babies and grandmas and whoever needs to sleep. Um, songs, security songs, songs to take you into that place of just knowing your identity, your origin, and reminding you of, of those things that even that you already know um, and just singing those songs over you. Um, so that's called Heaven Made You. Then we have... This is a project called Open the Door um, that I worked on. This took me over three years to work on. This was like going to school for me. Um, but God gave me songs, original um, songs on there. Um, he, I feel like he took me into some styles that aren't you know, always completely mine. Um, but I believe that he has things on there that he wants other people to experience and listen to. And then just go into the presence of God. So just enjoy that. That's called Open the Door. So... I'm really excited this morning to speak with you. Um, I believe that God put a word on my heart uh, that it's exciting when we get to talk about something that is really close to us. This particular word for me um, is incredible because it comes out of Psalm 139. And if, I'd like you to open up your Bibles if you have them with you this morning to Psalm 139. And then let's just read that together when you have that. Psalm 139, starting with verse 1. As worshipers, we want to start from a place of understanding our identity is in Christ. And Psalm 139, if you need to reaffirm your place of identity, Psalm 139, put it on your mirror, put it in your car, it's amazing, um, the, the truth in this psalm. Starting with verse 1. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. So we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to attain this lofty kind of thinking this morning. And uh, we're going to start with this concept of God searching us and knowing us. And how many of you know that when you, when you search something... How many of you have ever lost something in your home and you're searching, right? You're maybe even, depending on the level of importance to you, you might be frantically searching, right? Throwing things up and down. I think of somebody in their drawer, like throwing their socks around and stuff. You're just trying to find that lost item. You might search high and low, turn things upside down in your home until you find that thing that's missing. You might even call your family members. Hey, has anybody seen, you know, whatever it is, and have everybody kind of call in the search party and have everybody joining in with you. Well, when God searches, I, I looked up definition for search, and it was so interesting because sometimes it's that. It's looking for something missing or lost. Sometimes it's when we're looking for something that is concealed, something that's hidden. And those are, those are things that God can look at us, and he can look for something that's missing or something that's lost or something that we're hiding, that we're concealing. But the one that I, the definition I loved the most was to explore or examine in order to discover. Like, for example, they search the hills for gold. And when I think of you, and I think of God searching you, it's not like sometimes we grew up thinking that God was searching for all of the bad stuff in us, and then he was going to expose all of that. How many of you have ever had that? You don't have to raise your hand, but you've had that experience, right? And 
God is actually searching through you and he's looking for gold. He's looking for those hidden treasures that are inside you. Maybe you are concealing them a little bit. Maybe you are hiding them a little bit. But God is looking at you and he's, he's searching for the gold. He's searching for the treasure. And I think of, think of a pirate and how he, he goes after that treasure. He want the, the, his big goal in life is to get that big treasure chest full of gold. And really the father is looking at you and he's searching you and he's examining you. But it's not an examination where he's got the microscope and he's looking for all the bad stuff. He's looking at our heart. And I loved how that even came out in our worship this morning about him searching. He's searching and he knows what's in the depths of our heart. He knows those things that nobody else knows about you. He knows those things that you're not free enough even to tell your spouse or to tell somebody that's a best friend. God knows all of those things about you because he created you in his image and in his likeness. And so when he searches, I find it interesting that not only did he make us, not only does he know everything, he's, we know that he's omnipresent and we know that he's omniscient. He knows all things and he's everywhere, but yet he still searches. So if God who knows all things and God who is everywhere still is searching, how much more, and I'll, I'll touch on this more later, but how much more us, the need for us to search and seek out him. He's, he's all-knowing. I mean, he knows everything about everything and everybody, and yet he still digs down inside and seeks us and searches us. And I love that about God. So not only does he search us out, but he knows us. He knows everything about you. And I love how the psalmist, now, how many of you have ever, um, like in your God time, you actually let your mind kind of wander. You let yourself imagine. I noticed somewhere out here in the building it says imagine. And that's a great tool to use your imagination when it comes to God. Sometimes you might read a verse, but did you ever jump off of the verse and just begin to imagine, well, what's, what does that mean? What does it mean you search me and you know me? What does that, what is it talking about? And I love how the psalmist, David, goes into verse 2, like, when I sit and I rise, you perceive my thoughts. And so not only does he know when I sit and when I rise, but then he also perceives my thoughts. So he knows if I'm, if I'm you know, staying home today or if I'm going out running errands. He knows if I have to go to work. He knows if I'm picking up my child. He knows... So, this removes from us that sense of God being way up here. He knows there's a bunch of people down here that he made, but he doesn't really know them. And we know that that's a lie. And today I'm here to just remind you that God is so aware of your, your day that he knows when you get off of your seat and when you go and you walk around. He knows when you lay down and take a rest. He knows when you go to sleep at night. These are, these are not ideas of a God who's distant, but these are thoughts of a God who's very close to you. He perceives your thoughts. Perceive is recognizing and observing. God is, God is recognizing the thoughts that are going in your thought patterns. And how many of you know that we can have lots of different thought patterns? <laughs> and one of the things God is trying to, to work on in my life is just reminding me, you have the mind of Christ. And sometimes our minds, they we have all kinds of random thoughts. God knows all those thoughts. He knows the thoughts that you struggle with. He knows the thoughts that you deal with in your mind. And you can feel like you're all alone in those, those thoughts, right? The enemy might bombard you with thinking. He might come in at you. But God is aware of your thoughts. And God is the one that can help you to kind of rally those ones that need to go out, get rid of them, and move on to, to his kind of thinking. So let God into your thought process. Remember that he's there and he's got exactly what you need to overcome, certain thoughts, and he can lead you to focusing on those thoughts that are bringing life to you and that are encouraging to you. He discerns, verse 3 talks about how he discerns our going out and our lying down. And, and discern is, is kind of interesting because there's really the visual part of it where God, you know, he sees you, he actively sees you going out, he sees you lying down. But there, it can also be through other senses, too. God apprehends, he recognizes, he understands, he knows why we go where we go and why we do what we do. Sometimes we don't even really understand all of our ways, right? Because, you know, 
There's some things that you just do because you feel compelled to do because you have to do them. There's other things that you might even ask yourself, what am I, if you ever have one of those days, what am I even doing today? <laughs> you know, especially when you have a day off, it's kind of like you're just wandering through your house. Like, what, 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 am, I, what am I doing today? God, but God, see, what's neat is that God is in every moment. It's not like when you take a day off, he takes a day off from you. He's with you. Your day's off. I feel like God loves when you have that extra time. He loves to invade our space. He loves to get right in with us. And um, one of the things that I love to do, especially I do have some flexibility in my life. I have a good bit. I, I've worked on some, of, some projects. And actually, as you mentioned, I am working on a I am actually finished all the recording for a project called Take Me In. Um, it's a project to bring us into the presence of God, it's just a tool to help us to get there. And, um, but I, I find that when I, when I give God my flexible times, like my random thoughts, my random moments, my what am I doing moments, that he has a way of just taking those and ordering them. You know how like you might have your plan for the day, but God orders your steps? And he has a way of just coming into those moments that are kind of sporadic and kind of don't make a lot of sense. Or even sometimes we have seasons that we're just like, okay, what's, what's going on here? And we're not really clear as to where God's taking us and what's happening. And um, God has a way of coming into those moments, those chaotic moments, and bringing order. He has a way of just speaking a timely word into your life just at the right moment that you need it. And um, he's... He's, the psalmist talks about, he says, I love this, and I put like a big woo around this. You are familiar with all my ways. Think about that for just a minute. Think about God in heaven with the billions of whatever people there are in this world now. Think about him being familiar with all of your ways. So here you are, one person out of how many billion, and he's familiar with every single one of your ways. Now, I'm a mom, I have two daughters, and I am not familiar with every single one of their ways. I'm familiar with some of their ways, some ways I like and some ways I don't like so much, but I'm not as, as good of a mom as I can be. I could never understand every single one of their ways. I can't, I can't do that, but God can. So as big and as immense as he is, as being everywhere and knowing everything as he is, he still comes down to the one, and he's still very aware of searching, knowing, and being familiar with that one. I love that about God. I love the fact that, the, for me, my God is huge, and the reason for, one of the main reasons for me that he's huge is that he cares about the tiny things in my life. Start watching this week, if you haven't done this before, start watching for God to show up in your details. That is one of the things I love the most about God. Like he's, like I've gone to Starbucks when I wasn't expecting to go to Starbucks and I've literally seen somebody exchange a book, I think it was called Divine Appointments, and they were like exchanging the book in the Starbucks that I wasn't going to go to, that I was supposed to go to, and, and the book was Divine Appointments. Because God has these divine appointments and divine moments for you that he'll open up because he knows you so well, and he's all in your details. He searches you. He knows you. He knows where you're going. He knows where you don't need to go. He knows where you should be. I mean, he's just got it. And we as... Um, Americans in our country, we love our freedom, right? And we love to make our plan and we love to decide what we're going to do. But it's so awesome when you make your plan and you lay it before God and you're like, you know me, you know everything about me, you know what I'm going to do today. So I just give my plans to you and I let you order my steps. I let you take me where you want to take me. I let you do with me what you want to do. My thoughts, you know them all. So help me if some of them are getting off track. Bring me back on track and help me also to understand the magnitude of how much you love me today. Help me to get into some of your thoughts because how many of you know God is thinking about you all day? Like his thoughts for you outnumber the grains of sand. Like that's a crazy thought, right? His thoughts about you 
outnumber the grains of sand. And I know I've never counted all the grains of sand. I don't think anybody in this room could ever do that. But God's thoughts would, out, even if you could, his thoughts for you would outnumber the grains of sand. That's a crazy, awesome thought. <laughs> That's amazing. So let's go further. So verse 4, not only do you, do you perceive my thoughts, you discern my going out, my lying down. You're familiar with everything I do. But even before I say something, even before a word comes out of our mouth, God knows it. He knows what you're going to say before you say it. And how many of you have had that moment where all of a sudden you get ready to say something and you go into edit mode <laughs> before it comes out? So it's not like you took the manuscript and you edit it afterwards. But sometimes God puts the edit on you before it comes out. And so he gives you that little like, mm, no, don't go there. And so the Holy Spirit's amazing. He can save you from a lot of grief. Because if you just tap into the fact that he knows all your words before you say them, two things. There's the positive way to look at it in the negative. The positive way, hey, God knows what I'm going to say. He could certainly give me something really awesome to say to somebody today. He can give me something to say that would totally rock their world and change their life direction. So tap into that, right? And then those moments where maybe I'm off track in what I'm about to say, he can stop me and say, mm, let's not go there. We don't want to do that. We don't want to say that. So trust God in this area that he knows what you're about to say before you say it. I've already heard this morning, I've heard, it's been so encouraging. I've heard several um, things through your pastor and through Mary up here, life words coming out, life words. And my brothers tease me because I have a big thing with life words. But I'm in with my daughters, a big thing with life words because I feel like that, you know, the power of life and death is in our tongue. There's so much that we, we have the opportunity, if you think about it, to partner with God, to use our mouth, to, to speak over somebody else's life. Just think about that. It's so awesome. To speak life into them and to change their, their entire day. And in some cases, to change their life, really. Because you can speak a word of life. And, and we, we might say, you might have heard, you know, we use the word prophetic or we use the word prophecy. But really... A prophetic word is, is an encouraging word, okay? It's simply just speaking an encouragement for somebody. So you can do that. You can speak a life word. You don't need to tell somebody that, you know, in three months they'll be pregnant and jump out on that, you know, <laughs> jump out of the boat that way. But you could tell somebody an encouraging word from directly from heaven that God sees them right where they are, that he loves them, that he knows their name. Whatever it is that he puts in your heart, don't doubt it. Don't doubt, well, I can't. Don't, you know, I can't hear. You can hear from God. You're his sheep, and you, you hear. You have those ears to hear because you're his sheep. So you hear his voice. And so when he gives you that encouraging word, you know the enemy's not going to give you an encouraging word for anybody, right? <laughs> so when you get those encouraging words, just let them, just release them to those individuals that God puts in your path. And how many of you know God could, like, reroute somebody to your direction. So God can bring somebody who is going to go to somewhere else. He can bring them to Starbucks for you so that you can speak a word of life over them. So the fact that you, God knows what you're thinking, he knows what you're going to say, all of these things are for a reason and for a purpose. It's great for us to know, but then it's also great for what, what could be the result out of our life towards somebody else's life. So the fact that you're grounded and you know that God's made, he's created you, he's searched you, he knows who you are, he knows your name, he knows your thoughts, he knows where you're going today, he knows when you get up, he knows when you lie down. These are all encouraging words to you. Now that you're so full, you can go out and you can give those encouraging thoughts that you got from God to somebody else. So when God gives you, when God gives you an encouraging word, he gives you an encouraging thought for the day. Ask God, say, you know, say you're in your God time and you're reading the word. Ask God and say, is this just for me? Or do you want me to tell somebody else this? You know, or you could pray like, God, this word that you gave me this morning, because you love other people too, I pray that you would open up doors today 
so that I could give this word to somebody else. Show me somebody in Walmart. Show me somebody when I'm getting my groceries. Show me somebody at work today that needs to hear the same word that you gave me. Because you don't just love one person on this planet. You love every person on this planet, and you're intimately acquainted with every one of us. So it's just, to me, this, the thoughts in these first six verses of Psalm 139 are boundless. Like, if you use your imagination and the Holy Spirit, it's just amazing what can come out of this, a little, little, little portion of scripture. And I think David really was hitting on something that's just appropriate for our entire life. Let's look at um, verse 5. It says, you hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Now, if you didn't have a good morning, that'll set you free right there. God hemmed you in behind, before, and he's got your hand, his hand on your head. You think you're covered? How many of you feel covered? <laughs> I feel covered. <laughs> so I looked this up in a few other versions. It was pretty cool to me that um, one of them says, you are all around me. Just think of that. God is all around you. One says, you have enclosed me. One said, you, you encircle me. These are all great thoughts, right? God encircles you. He, if you. If you're having a difficult time at work, if you're having a moment with your spouse, if you're having a difficult friendship relationship, just stop for a minute and just think, God, God is circling me. God is, I'm encircled. If you're in fear, if you have anxiety, you have an anxious moment, just stop for a minute and say, God, you're, you've circled me. Like, there's no, there's no space for anything else to get in my bubble here. And one of the things I like, I prayed even today, hide me in the shadow of your wings. Just awesome thought of just being under the shadow of God's wings. You're just hiding there. You're just safe and protected. This is one I love. Um, this is such a great way to say it. You squeeze me in. Now, I, have a, I have a little story, and I find that God brings this back to my mind. I don't know how many times. When I was a little girl, I was afraid of heights, and I was on a ride in an amusement park with my dad, which was really unusual. We didn't go on a lot of rides together, but I was on a, a, a ride with my dad. And I think it was called the octopus. Remember it with the arms that go out and then it just goes right. And it's not really, really super high or anything, but it just kind of spins and whatever. And I was, I don't know how old I was, but for some reason it was, it was scary to me. So my dad had his arm around me and he was like, he was like trying to hold, squeeze me in, you know, hold me close. And I'm like, squeeze me tighter, squeeze me tighter. And he's like, I am. He's like, I don't want to bruise you or whatever. But like he was holding me as tight as he knew how to hold me. And that's how it is with God. Like, it's like he's, he's squeezing us tighter and tighter and tighter. And we're so held and we're so safe and we're so protected. He circles you. He surrounds you. He covers you. And he's got you on this ride that we call life. He's got you circled. He's got you covered. And sometimes when you're, you're going through a shaky time, difficult time, you can feel a bit like, you're out there on your own. You feel like you're on that crazy ride and you're by yourself. But just remember that God has you circled. Not only has he made a provision to be around you, in front of you, beneath you, behind you, he's got his hand on you, okay? And, and Jeremiah talks about, I know the plans I have for you. His plans are to prosper you. We all know this probably, probably most of us, if not all of us. His plan is to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and to give you a hope. When God searches you out, he's looking for the gold inside of you. He's looking for those treasures that he placed in you. He knows all about how he's going to use those treasures. He knows all about what you're thinking and what your plans are. He knows what you're doing. He's got you circled and he's got you covered. And if you're fearful that, you know, I might step over here and I might get out of that plan that he had. Just remember, he's intimately acquainted with every single one of your ways. So the fact that you could get out of that circle is not, it's really not possible when you're God's child. So don't worry about 
if I get out of the circle. Because if you move where you shouldn't be, his circle's going to come around like, hey, like, come on, let's go back this way. So just think of it as, I don't know, you can think of a spotlight, you know, where you, you ever see that big, big circle spotlight on something? And it just keeps moving wherever, wherever that per- person moves, that spotlight just keeps, just keeps moving around. And that's really God, like he's got you in his spotlight. And I think it's so freeing to know that his spotlight isn't shining on you to say, oh, look at all those imperfections in there. He, he has a different way when he looks at us. He looks at us as a father who loves. So when he looks at us, it's not that, whole, that eye, all-knowing eye that's tearing us apart or that's pulling out the bad stuff or focusing on the blemishes. He's the father that's looking at us and saying, wow, I put that in her. I put this in him. I stuck this gift down inside that one. There it is. I see it. I see it. I see it popping up. I see it. I see it coming to the surface. And God delights in you. And he loves when he sees you. This one right here, there's so much creativity on you. And when God sees you, put a paintbrush or whatever in your hand. It's, like, it's almost like he could put anything in your hand and you would just make something beautiful. And God, when he sees you do that, he's like, I put that in her. I put that inside of her. I gave her that gift. And when he sees you bring that out, it brings him great pleasure. It just delights him. I mean, think about... Think about little Zoe up here and how she twirls the ribbon, and, and, and that delights her dad because her dad gets to see her worshiping and gets to see her honoring God from so little. And like, think about how God, when he actually placed a gift inside of you, you discover it, you begin to discover it. Maybe he shows it to you. Maybe he speaks to somebody else and they bring it up to you. And that gift that he placed all that time ago inside of you he knew that you were going to be born when you were going to be born, but he knew way before you were in your mother's womb, right? We were in Christ from the foundations of the earth. So he, he had this big plan for you way before, way before your birth. And he, when he sees that begin to come out of you, it brings him so much delight and so much pleasure. And he's going to be, I mean, he'll be intimately acquainted with your ways no matter which way you step, no matter what you do, but you bring him such pleasure when you, when you start tapping in to the things that he put inside of you. And when you begin to understand who you are, and when you begin to, to listen and say, I'm your sheep, I can hear your voice. You think I could say something to somebody that could change their life? You think I could be used to, to and speak an encouraging word over somebody to show them that you love them today? God, that would be awesome. And it brings so much joy to him that when not only is he tapping into our thoughts, but then there's this this shift that happens. So first it's like God knows you and he's searching you and he's seeking you out. But then there's this thing that Jeremiah 29, 13 talks about. It says, "You, you will seek me. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So now it, it, it changes because in the beginning it was all about God searching out us and knowing us and then we come to an understanding that God has searched us and that God knows right where we are and that he finds us and that he, he's, we, we begin to get more understanding that he knows all of our ways and that he's familiar with all of our ways. And then it comes to this place in our life where we can get a passion for seeking after him and searching him. Think about this now. Him searching me, I feel like, is like a simple thing. I feel like for him, that's just like what he does, you know? (laughs) But when it comes to me searching out an incredible God, is there ever room for boredom or for for saying, oh, I'm all done with that, (laughs) you know? Because God is so immense. There is so much to God that you could never out, like you could never tap out on that. So searching for him becomes then this life passion that we have is like the depths, like there's something deeper. Oh, I just saw that. Well, that's something I didn't know about God before. And then 
I search, maybe I'm searching in his word, maybe it's in a worship song, maybe, maybe it's in a message that we hear, maybe, um, you know, we're just walking through our day and we see something in creation that reminds us of how amazing God is. Maybe we look, you know, at, I love to look at the sky at night and just, it's just immense to me. And the changes that happen in the sky, the stars and the different patterns up there, just, I just love to look up. And I love to, if you ever want to do this, I love to see the Big Dipper and ask God to pour that over me. Pour the Big Dipper. I want the Big Dipper. That's the kind of measure I want over my head is the Big Dipper measure. But there's something immense about our God. There's so many facets. He's like that beautiful diamond that sparkles from every single angle, and it's perfect. And so when you go after treasure, I mean, we're God's treasure, right? But he's our treasure. And so when you get opportunity every day, I feel like if we'll make the opportunity, we have the opportunity to search out God. And it's not rocket science because he so wants to be searched that I feel like if you just take a step in that direction, that he's quick to answer you, he's quick to show you. Think about if, if you're in a relationship with a person that you really wanna get to know, and do you remember that when, maybe when you're dating in your beginning stages and you're sharing all this information, and one person says something, then the other person connects, and then the other person says something, the other person, and you just back and forth, and you're, you're just excited about learning about this other person. And, and that person is usually quick to offer up information about themselves, right? Because they want to be known. And God wants to be known by you, and he's going to be so quick to offer up information for him, about himself. All you have to do is take the step in that direction. All you have to do is open up your heart. God, I'm open. You say a simple prayer in the morning. Maybe you're rushing. Maybe, maybe you have a really busy full schedule. God, I'm open. I'm open to hearing more about who you are. I want to know you. I want to know who you are. Show me something about yourself today. Even if it's something, something I've heard before, you just can remind me of that. Or maybe it's something that I never knew about you. You could even ask him, tell me, God, tell me a secret about you today. I'd like to know a secret about you. I'd like to know something that you never told me. Tell me that. And it's so exciting. It's, I, it just reminds me of a child asking their daddy, like, tell me something else about when you were a little boy, or tell me something else about when you were growing up, or what was it like in your house, or tell me something about you and mommy and when you were dating, or, you know, sometimes kids want to know that kind of stuff about their parents, and it gives them what? Sense of security, right? Kind of like knowing where you came from. So when you press into God, and you're asking and you're getting to know him, it actually doubles back on you because that's your daddy. That's your father. So when you know more about him, then you begin to say, wow, that's, I'm, I'm like that. I've got that in me. Hey, we have that same quality, just like when a father and a son are talking. Hey, hey, buddy, you got that same thing I have. I love sports. You love sports. Look at that. We're, we're the same. And so sometimes when you are connecting with God, you might see, hey, we're, wow, we're similar like that. That's pretty awesome. And so God can begin affirming inside of you those things that he put in you long ago. But you maybe never saw them. But now all of a sudden you're searching out God and he begins to reveal you. So it really just goes back and forth. It goes back and forth. It's this process of getting to know each other. And what I love about God is like, we'll be doing this forever. We will be getting to know God forever because he's so limitless, boundless. There are no ends. There's no measure. You can't measure his greatness. You can't measure how amazing. And when you try as a, as a human, we try to put it into words. We can't even, we can't even put it into words. But sometime I'd encourage you this week, Take out a piece of paper. I love blank. How many of you like notebooks and paper? Blank paper? I love blank paper because it's an opportunity for me to, to be creative on. It's an opportunity for me to express myself on. And take out a piece of paper this week. If you don't have a journal, a God journal of any kind, 
I am so an advocate for that. Get yourself a jar. They're so inexpensive. You can find them at Walmart. Uh, if you like a really nice one, you can find them at Barnes and Noble and places like that. But get yourself a journal because the thing is, God is going to be igniting in you. I believe in, in most, if not all of you, he's going to begin speaking some things and downloading some things into your mind and into your heart. I believe he wants to show you more about who he is. And so if you have a notebook or a piece of paper, something that you can record those things so that you, you might think, well, I'm gonna remember, I'm sorry, but you may forget. So take the time, a few minutes, to write those things down. And then when you're having a day that's kind of, hmm, not the best, go back, bring out your notebook, and look over those attributes of God. The enemy starts telling you, well, God doesn't care, and God this and that. Take out the notebook. Well, this is what God told me. Hmm? He told me this, so that's a lie, <laughs> you know? So the truth that God gives you is this foundation, and when the enemy comes in with the lies, you're not, it doesn't blow you over because you have the truth. And of course, you can take out his word and you can compare what, what you heard to what the word says. But you also have those God moments where he brings specific things because God knows how to, those things that you need to hear, God knows what they are. The things that are unique to you as an individual because he knows all your ways. So he knows every, you know, every little detail about you. So he knows, for example, there's certain things that when God says to me, like I don't tend to be someone who cries a lot, but when God speaks to me, oh my. It's like, oh, you know. It's like he just drops these things right into my spirit that totally change my outlook for the day because he knows you that well. Some of you have a best friend who can do that for you a little bit. Like they know the right things to say. But God is the only one that knows you so intimately that he can say something and speak something into your life that like nobody else can. And he knows the timing and the moment. And the big key for us is just to be open. So Father, we thank you today that we are going to ask you this morning, big, we're gonna ask big. We're gonna ask you that you would reveal more of yourself to us. God, first of all, we start at the place for saying, we just want to say thank you that you know us. Thank you that you know me, God. Thank you that you are intimately acquainted with all of my ways. God, I thank you that I am not just a tiny little spot in the universe, but to you, God, you see me as you made me to be. And God, you notice, you notice the details of our day, you notice the details of our life, and as many of the, as uh, there are grains of sand, Lord, you have more thoughts than that. Your thoughts outnumber the grains of the sand. Your thoughts towards us are wonderful. God, it's hard for us to contain it. It's, it's hard for us to even imagine that you could be so incredible and that we could be so incredibly made. But we ask that you would open up our eyes and our ears and our spirit that we could take in this truth this morning. And God, we ask that you would draw us by your spirit into a seeking and a searching mode, God, that we would search for you as hidden treasure because you are our treasure. We might see other things in this life. We might enjoy them. We might like them. But you, God, you are the treasure of our life. You're the treasure of my world, God. You're the one who satisfies. You're the one who shows me who I am. You're the one who shows me because I came from you because I was made in your image and likeness. And God, I just pray for every person in this room this morning. I'm just gonna ask you, if every close their eyes and the ones that I'm speaking to at this moment, I just, if you hear this, that's me, I want you to stand. I believe there's some people in this room this morning that have struggled with identity, that have struggled with even feeling like the father's child at times. And I believe there's freedom for you this morning. So don't be shy to stand to your feet if you have struggled, even if it's a teeny little bit, in the area of just knowing your identity in Christ and understanding your value, the value that you have to him. I'm standing right now. I've walked through this in my own life. And I just thank you, Father, for releasing 
for releasing on everyone in this room, but I pray especially over those that have struggled, God, to know that they belong to you, to know that they are your child, to know that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, created in your image and your likeness, that you are crazy about them, that you are wild about them, God, that you are aware of every one of their ways. Let today be their breakthrough moment, God. Let the love of God pour over them and let there be a new revelation. Let there be a new revelation among all of us, God, that you know us, that you made us, that you are intimately close to us. And God, I ask for those ones, Lord, especially that are standing this morning, that you would circle them, but not only circle them, God, but that they would know, they would have a, um, a sense of your manifest presence circling them this morning. God, you're always around us, but sometimes we need that extra tight squeeze. Squeeze us in this morning and let us know, remind us that you are with us and that you know us and that you are calling us to that place of seeking and knowing you and finding you. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody give God a hand today. That is awesome. <laughs> Uh, well, this is uh, a significant word for for us. It's really uh, it's really a, a great, fresh perspective on God being with us. And you can live your life towards God, or you can live your life with God. And Jesus came so we can live with Him, not just try to get to heaven one day where we're going towards Him, but He came to make us His house. His temple, so we live with him. And the reason I say it's significant for us is because uh, my wife and I uh, came very close to naming Sadie Promise Emmanuel. And that's because we received several, uh, several significant words from people hearing from God and coming talking to us that Sadie, that our baby was going to be a sign of God being with us. And I know that they are driving here right now. And so it's just interesting to get to introduce our baby, and then God speaks to Kim that is supposed to release this word about this is, a, this is a sign of God being with you. And just think, to, you live your life from what you set your mind on. What you, what you park on, what you meditate on is where you live from. And if you set your mind on the reality, not a hopeful wish, but the reality no matter if you feel like it, no matter what's going on, the reality of what Scripture says that God is with you. It really changes and it, it, it determines how you face your day and how you live it out. What a powerful, powerful message that the most powerful being to ever exist is with you because he wants to be there. <laughs> I just love that. I love that. He's with you because he wants to be. Yeah, and so we can trust him and we can live from his love. This morning we're going we're gonna to receive our tithes and offerings. And uh, I want you to think about, I want you to think about giving to a good father. Whether you had one or not, just imagine if you didn't. Giving to a good father, giving your hand to him and he can take you farther than you've ever gone before. And I, I just want to ask you here today to, to give out of honor as well for a, a mother in the faith. I know I have, a, I have an amount in my mind, but I would love for us to be able to give more and uh, to really bless where they're at. And uh, they're, I believe we're going to Germany after here or something, but they were able to spend some time with us today before they take off somewhere else. And I uh, encourage you guys to make their load really light in the area of their CDs um, because you can give that to someone else. I heard a rumor that Christmas is on the 25th of December this year. And uh, just to give you a heads up on that, uh, so these are things are great Christmas presents. And um, the reason I'm bringing that stuff up is uh, we carry some of these things uh, because they are a gift that really continues to give in people's lives. And so 
just a powerful message of, of God being with you. And, uh, you know, this might sound funny, but you're Chelsea, right? Is that right? right. I just really feel, Chelsea, that um, the, the enemy was really afraid of you being alive. And at some point, yeah, he wanted to take you out. But he, I just wanted to, to let you know that God has said he's failed. And that you really carry a message of God being with you to people. And you help set them free. And just your encouragement to people changes the atmosphere and dy dynamics of the room. And that God has never left you. He's never forsaken you. But you're his princess. And he's so proud of you. You're his little girl. And he just wants you to know. He wanted to interrupt what I'm doing just to say I'm crazy about you. He really is. And uh, so thanks for being you. This is amazing. Um, yeah. So we're, we're going to receive out of honor, to give out of honor here today. We have uh, envelopes. If you would like an envelope, we do receive out of um, credit cards. If you want to give, give with a credit card, you can put your numbers on there. Just ask you not to go in debt to give. <laughs> But give what, what's on your heart. Give what's on your heart and then some. I'm going to encourage you guys to do that because it's well worth it. It's just invest into the kingdom. And it's really good to do that. We do that as a practice in our lives. And we just like to invest, invest into the kingdom. And they say, why are you receiving an offering now? It's because we want to give in a place uh, where honor is released. And it's an act of worship. It's an act of responding where you say, God, because I know you're with me out of honor of who you are, I give to you, knowing and believing that you are with me, knowing that you are with me and you're going to take care of me. And so we give from that place knowing that God is going to meet us there. So I want to pray over offering. And then Kim wants to minister in song here. We'll come up and close a little bit, but uh, when we have guest speakers here, let's try to be a little flexible on more flexible on our time together and I just want to encourage you guys to press in because of, uh, this time here of ministering and music is a, a wonderful way of loving on God and, and really feeling that place where he surrounds us if you guys want to come up if you want a, an envelope raise your hand they'll get that to you and uh, we, we just want to give to the Lord and connect with him and so we're going to receive the offering and then uh, Kim's going to take us back into a, uh, a time of, of really connecting with a God who's with you because he wants to be there. <laughs> it's amazing. So, Father, we just bless this, and we thank you for the privilege of being loved by you. Lord, I thank you that you're with us because you want to be there and that we live life from you, that you surround us that you search us and we search you, that we are on this adventure together. We just bless that. And as uh, gifts are given today, we give them into your hand, knowing that you are with us. And Father, I pray for your blessing over every person here. I ask that you would pour out favor over them, creativity, finance, that you would pour out open, open doors, jobs, raises, all kind of things, God, just out of, your, out of your goodness. I just pray for that to be released. Lord, we thank you that you're a good father. In Jesus' name, amen.
frustrated with you. I'm not looking at you to try to inspect and dissect and take you apart, but I'm looking deep inside your heart, and I see. I see what I place there. I see the value that I place there. I see what's worth dying for. I see why I gave my life, and I'm, I'm so thankful that I gave my life for you, 
for you as an individual, for you right where you're sitting. God sees you. God knows you. And I thank you, Father, that you're demolishing lies this morning. I thank you that you're setting hearts free to know that they are known, that they are not alone, that they are not sitting in a secret dark place where nobody can touch them, but God, that they are sitting in a place circled, circled by your love, God. You encircle us today. You take us in, God. Your hand is on our lives today. Father, your hand is on every single one of us sitting here today. Your hand is on us today, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you know us, Jesus. Thank you that you know us, God. There's a young lady sitting in the um, second to last row next to the man in the plaid. Right there. I see you smiling. And I just believe that God wants to affirm a create He wants to affirm a creativity in you that He put inside you when you were even before you were born. He it was there, it was innate to you as an individual. And I, I, I sense that maybe you've closed some of that off, but God is just opening the door wide over you. He's saying, Come on up. The door is open. I, I want. I have some more creative stuff to show you. I want to create with you. So I just bless you with that. I bless your creativity. And I thank you, God, for multiplying, even multiplying the gifts in her life. God, I thank you for taking her deeper with, with her gifts. I thank you for taking her deeper in your presence, God, just to, to experiment in your presence, to experiment with those gifts, Lord, that creativity, the, the painting, the different things the different styles, Lord, the different mediums, Lord, I, I just thank you for taking her in, God, taking her in, Lord. And it's like there's a blank, a big blank canvas in front of you. And God just says, I just want to, I just want to paint through you. I just want to express myself through your hands. I just want to express myself through you. And we have some dancers in here today, and I just want to release the dancers in the house. I know you're a painter back there, Mary, but I also believe there's a dancer inside of you. And, and I thank you, I thank you, God, for freeing us to not have to be perfectionists at these things. We don't have to be professionals. And I thank you for taking all of us into a place where we experience that creativity that you placed inside of us, Lord. And it's different for each one of us, God, but I thank you for taking us into a place where we're not afraid to try. We're not afraid to be that little kid with that cram box, God. Take us deeper. I thank you that there's those that will write songs in this room, God. I thank you for taking the, the lyricists, the poets, deeper, Lord, deeper into new revelation, God, of who you are. I thank you for new songs erupting out of this place, God. God, we bless Micah. God, we bless her songs. We bless that gift to write, Father. We just thank you for bringing out new songs in a new season, Lord. New songs for this new season, God. Thank you for songs of joy, for celebratory songs. Thank you for life words flowing from her lips, God. We bless her, and we bless her new little life, God. And we just thank you for Sadie, Lord, and we thank you for this princess that you brought. And God, we thank you that just as her daddy's so proud of her, and he, he sees her, and he He's in awe of all the little things she's doing. That's how you look at us, God. That's how you look at us, God. That's how you see us today, God. That's how you see us, Father. And God, I thank you that you're opening eyes. You're opening each one of our eyes to see you, see you for who you are. And also, I ask that you would open our eyes to see how you see us, God. What do you see? Ask him, what do you see when you look at me? Let him show you what he sees when he looks at you. Yeah. And you know me, all my thoughts, God. You know me, all my ways. And when I awake, I am still. with you, God. And 
And God, we're going to come after you. We're going to seek you, and we will find you. And hungry I come to you, for I know you satisfied. I am empty, but I know your love does not run dry. So I This was awesome. Thank you, Kim. I thought uh, an appropriate ending to this message since Sadie was talked about so much. She just arrived. And so uh, I would like to present to all of you our newest little daughter, Sadie Promise. And remind all of you, wherever you go, God is with you. He encompasses you, holds you in his arms, and he loves you forever. Bless you guys. Can we just stand up? Can I say the last prayer? Is that okay? Yeah, I've been quiet. It's like fire shut up in my bones. So, <laughs> honey, can you come down and just pray for them and bless them? I know Mike is standing in the back. You're okay. It's your choice if you want to come. You won't miss the blessing. It's okay. Stay right there. Lord, just thanks for Micah and Ben and this precious promise that you've given them, God. And Lord, I thank you for this message, God, that's life today. It is life words. God, we thank you for your words are life. And even when other people left Jesus and 
They couldn't handle his words. He said, are you going to go to? And they said, where will we go? You have the words of life, God. Lord, I thank you for people that are hungry for the words of life. And I thank you for a couple and a family that says we're going to be words of life to people. God, I thank you for this child that was a, a promised child for them, a prophetic sign to them, God, that you're doing something new in them, that you're releasing their words, their promises to a new level, God. I thank you that their words, God, are going to go farther than ever before. Micah's voice and her songs are going to go farther than ever, ever before. Ben's heart is going to reach out farther than ever before, God. And each person here, God, we're reminded that you have words that you put inside of us, words that you spoke over us before the foundation of the world, God, and that th those words we say are yes to us, and we say amen to them. Lord, we bless this child. God, we thank you that it's a sign of a new generation, God, of, of worshipers, of kingdom worshipers, God, that understand the royal identity, understand that they were promised by God. Lord, we just declare health over her, strength over her, God. We thank you for strong lungs. We thank you for an amazingly loud cry, God. Lord, that will be sign of a voice that you're giving to a generation, God, an ear-piercing cry that would awaken your church, that would call the dry bones together, even as we heard the prophetic picture given and through the artwork, God, that this is a generation called to look out at the dry dust and dirt and see and call the beauty, call the royalty, call the kingdom, and call the dry bones together. So I thank you for Sadie's voice, Lord, that it will, it will sing to the dry bones and they'll come together. It will sing to the sinews and they'll come together. It will sing to, the, to disease and it will be healed. It will sing to deformity and it will be amended. It will sing to death and it will be resurrected, God. I thank you for that voice, God, that's going to ring from her, God. And Lord, I thank you. Lord, that, Lord, it's part of the generational promise over this family, both sides uh, coming together and being released. And Lord, I pray for each person today. Lord, the words that we heard today, may we not only, may they not only be life and encouragement to us, but may they be empowerment to, uh, to us that as we go out, God, that there are people, Lord, that need to hear your life words today. There are people that live in darkness that need to, need to see a great light. There are people that live in gloom that need to, to hear that the light has come. Arise, shy, for the light has come. So, Lord, we just bless the light that's in us, and we release the life that's in us through the words we speak in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So they good or what? Amen. Yeah. Amen. This is her first public presentation. She hasn't been anywhere else. It's the first place that she's come. And uh, so um, as kind of a part of our, uh, our culture here, we're a mobile church. And so as we move here in our next segment, um, I could use help, I, don't, I think, Matt will be back. Oh, there he is back there. Matt, uh, he's going to help organize for our setup because there's a school that meets here. And so anybody that can help do that. I, we're not going to stay long. We're going to take the baby out. Um, I just wanted to show her to you. And then she gets a little bigger and stuff. We'll stay a little longer. But I want to get her out. and um, So I won't be staying today to help reset up. But Matt will help you guys be organized. Anyone that can stay and make sure that Matt's not here for another three hours by himself trying to get stuff set up would be greatly appreciated. Right, Matt? Yeah. And there is a leftover...